Santa Pod. Uh, it's the uh, spiritual home of drag racing in the UK, and it's also the venue for this, the fourth event in the Ultimate Street Bike Series. Um, we've got over 500 riders entered for, uh, for this event. It's traditionally the largest one in the series. And uh, although the weather's not absolutely brilliant at the moment, at least it's dry, so uh, we're all hoping for a good day's sport. On with the action. Dean Williamson on his GSX 1100R burning out. He was one of the first riders to the line. The run, 11.05 at 126 miles per hour, was going to be bettered. If only he could keep that front end down. On the subject of GSX 1100Rs, it was great to see Andy Brewster back in action after his near-fatal accident earlier this year. Sporting new Dymo livery and looking a bit more squatted at the rear, Andy was into the tens as usual. Two Brewsters. Robles Brewster on a GSX 1150 was charging hard. Even if he's no relation to Andy, he owes much of his riding style to him. The two stroke twins were here, with big sponsors' paintwork, extended rear swinging arms and some very quick runs, wheelies included. No need to look back, we've got it all on film. Black is beautiful. True, if you're talking about John Bent's Suzuki GSX 1100 Turbo, which has already shown its 10 second capabilities, although not on this run. The end result this time out was an 11.22 at 127 miles per hour. The marshals were eager to get contenders through as the bad weather loomed overhead. This Yamaha FJ1100 belonging to Paul Lawrence was long, low and turning 11 second runs here at Santa Pod. John Benham's Rorty Le Mans was topping the four stroke twins. While John Kuhn was just edging out Bill Cut in the two stroke open. Col Rule, second at York, sixth at Long Marston. He wanted nines here at Pod. This was quick. 10.03 at 136 miles per hour. The fastest run of the day so far. One of the most spectacular looking street bikes at the venue was that of Nigel Hatton's, an ex Graham Nash funny bike. Nigel ran a best of 10.32 at 129 miles per hour to put him second just behind Col Roar. Who said people didn't travel far for the ultimate street bike? This Z1000 Turbo came from Ireland with Mel Nolan. You remember Mel on that Honda Turbo breaking land speed records. Ken Taylor was having traction problems. Problems also for Steve Powis and his Harris Suzuki, only his seemed a little more terminal. And on the subject of Harris specials, this one was suffering from a traditional fault. A short wheelbase and plenty of power equals wheelies. Among the one-run wonders at Santa Pod on the Saturday were Suzuki-mounted Steve Burns, Kawasaki-mounted Dave Ennis, and Bill Hunter on his Spondon GSX Suzuki, which this year is housed in an all-aluminium box section chassis weighing less than 20 pounds. The engine, now at 1260cc, produces the goods in plenty. After Bill's solitary 10.14 at 149 miles per hour run, we asked him why were the modifications when you were going so well in 1986. The whole point in doing these modifications is that we should be able to leave the line a lot harder than last year. Anything above 5,000 revs last year after a large burnout would just stand the bike up. So we hope that it will improve it in that area. As we're really looking forward to the ultimate street bikes anyway this year, more than ever to try and like, develop the new bike and hope it runs OK. Uh, I think Tony's still doing a good job in organising the event, being a nice chap what he is. And uh, that person Steve Burns keeps cropping up again, doesn't he? We'll have to see to him in the end. Among the top placed Kawasaki's was this ZX1100 complete with turbocharger and ridden by Graham Bolchin to a best of 10.93 at 135 miles per hour. A rare sight at any drag strip this side of the Atlantic, the mighty VMAX. Also, the latest CBR Hondas are a bike rarely seen on the strip, 
perhaps due to their cost. But then cost never seems a deterrent for GSX 1100R users. We said that the ultimate street bike attracted top riders, and Santa Pod was no exception. Alan Jeffries on his Kawasaki Turbo Funny Bike was aiming to be the first to dip into the magical seven second bracket. Well, this is the second day of the meeting. We had close on a thousand runs yesterday, but today the only runs that will be made are runs for cover. Although it's in the middle of July, the weather here is rather reminiscent of a wet weekend in Skegness, and the forecast is unfortunately rather grim. By mid-morning, after camping all night, most gave up hope of running and went home. But a few stayed to the bitter end, using the empty pit road for smoky donuts. So a disappointing end to what promised to be the biggest ultimate street bike meeting of the series. But let's not take any credit away from Col Rule, who posted the winning run on Saturday of 10.03 at 136 miles per hour. Second was Bill Hunter, with a solitary run of 10.14 at 149 miles per hour. Third was Nigel Hatton, on the mighty Cosman Kawasaki, with a 10.32 at 129 miles per hour. Fourth, Dave Ennis, on another Kawasaki, with a 10.33 at 136 miles per hour. Fifth was Tony Childerhouse, on a Suzuki, with a 10.34 at 135 miles per hour. And finally, Terry Martin, finishing just ahead of brother Tracy, with a 10.35 at 136 miles per hour. Pip Hyams Village Bike Shop can offer you the very best in four-stroke performance. Chris Hampson, past Ultimate Street Bike winner and now Funny Bike competitor, is proof of this. So, when fast comes first, contact Pip Hyam on 061-790-2828. Cranfield Airfield in Bedfordshire is a new venue for the Ultimate Street Bike in 1987. After the uh, rain off disappointment of Santa Ford last month, Cranfield represents the last chance for well over 200 riders to uh, try and qualify for a place in next month's final at Long Marston. Uh, although the track here is virtually brand new, uh, at least the track is dry and uh, I think nine second runs are definitely on the cards today. And Tony was right. Tracy Martin on his Saxon GSX 1100 Suzuki, sporting turbo and water injection, ran straight into the nines. With this run, a 9.74 at 143 miles per hour. Brother Terry, no, he's not a priest. Actually, he's Tracy Martin's brother on his GS1000, which is equipped with a later 1100 EFE engine and turbocharger. A nine second machine in the making but unfortunately, not on this pass. Although Terry went on to run 10.3 at 139 miles per hour later in the day. Alan McTaggart's 1325cc big block Suzuki Katana was running well, with mid 10 second passes reinforced with 130 mile per hour terminals. Talking of Katanas, Graham Dance, on his 1170cc specimen, was tailing Alan McTaggart's efforts in the open class, although his opponent on this run was hardly a fair match. Motor Martins seemed to descend on Cranfield in numbers. One of the quickest of these specials was the CBX Martin, ridden by Bill Cusmans, to a best of 11.38 at 119 miles per hour. Remember the mighty Morawaki Kawasaki's ridden by Graham Crosby? This is as close as you'll get in road trim, owned by Paul Sullivan. It ran low 11s at Cranfield. Andy Snellgrove, on one of the very popular GSX 1100Es, rode to a best time of 11.37 at 112 miles per hour. This looks like someone that could be after the lead from Tracy Martin. Bill Hunter on his Spondon GSX Turbo. Looks like a quick one, but not quick enough. 10.5 at 143 miles per hour. Another couple of top contenders, Dave Ennis on his nitrous injected Z1B Kawasaki and Jimmy Dunn on his turbo ESD Suzuki. Off the line, Jimmy comes sideways and almost picked up a St John's ambulance en route. Meantime, Dave Ennis was crossing the line. We spoke to him in the pit. 
My name's Dave Ennis, but people call me the Buzzard. This is my Kawasaki 1200. I've had it 10 years and I've been racing it at the pod that the Superbike does since the first one. Doing pretty good today. I've got a 10-3, uh, 136. I think I'm in third position overall and uh, first in the nitrous class. Uh, hopefully for next year I should uh, be getting my turbo going. I've got two bikes because I'm a greedy person, but uh, anyway. Yeah, and uh, I've got a new cylinder head for this bike and off a GPZX and I should be going up to about 1300cc. In the two-stroke twin class, Dave Martin on an RD400 was again running consistently in the 11s and surprising a few of the larger capacity competitors with his rapid coverage of the quarter. Also on a Yamaha in the same class was local man Ken Wildman with his elongated 350LC just failing to break into the 11s. Best being 12.1 at 105 miles per hour. John Boy Messenger, top open class contender on his GSX 1150E, usually coming off the line like a bullet from a magnum. John was not showing the same form which had so convincingly won him top spot at Long Marston. As this was the last chance for many to qualify for a place in the final, there was a lot of frantic activity in the pits with minor adjustments being made in order to squeeze that last mile per hour out of the motors. For one person, Ron Russell, it worked. On his nitrous-injected GSX 1100, he ran a best of 10.46 at 133 miles per hour to secure a place in the final at Long Marsden. With over 30 riders recording runs in the tens, there was plenty of action, but some managed to relax through it all. In the two-stroke open class, it was Bill Colcutt and his Suzuki again up front. This particular run was not to be. Chris Spry on his H2750 Kawasaki was getting quicker. His opposition this time round, a Triumph twin. Talking of twins, John Benham on his Guzzi Le Mans was looking quickest in the four-stroke twin class with a joint total capacity of fast approaching 3,000 cc Tony Arnold and Stuart Hellyer lined up to do battle. Tony seemed to pick up Jimmy Dunn's earlier rubber track and took a wide berth, but still managed to hang on. And if you didn't already know, Cranfield is still an airfield, a working airfield. So when a plane, however small, wants to taxi across the drag strip, the racing must stop. Still waiting in the vast queue of riders was Steve Burns. Let's not forget him. Meanwhile, Tracy Martin has extended his lead with a 9.72 at 147 miles per hour. The action continued fast and furious, with plenty for the crowds to applaud. A Ferrari car tire on a bike? Yes, well, we are talking about Nigel Hatton on his road legal funny bike. Complete with Cosman frame, turbo, nitrous oxide injection, and all the power driven via a three-speed auto box. The result, one hell of a handful. This promised to be a good race. Bill Hunter lined up with Andy Brewster on his GSX 1100R. Andy gets the jump on Bill at the start, but the mighty Spondon went on to win. Another GSX 1100R going well was that of Brian Allen Ross. Brian last year was Honda mounted. This year on the Suzuki, he's been turning low 11s each time out. Back with the leaders, Steve Burns had arrived again. With his earlier run in the nines, himself and Tracy Martin, the only two to run in the nines, the race was on. Steve lets the scrambler take off, then launches hard, going on to record an identical time to Tracy Martin. The first ever tie for first place in the ultimate street bike. Equal first, Steve Burns and Tracy Martin, with a time of 9.72 at 147 miles per hour. Third was John Boy Messenger with a 10.23 at 141 miles per hour. Fourth was Ian Toms on his turbo katana, with a 10.24 at 133 miles per hour. Fifth was Terry Martin, with a 10.3 at 139 miles per hour. And sixth and finally, Dave Ennis on his Z1B, with a 10.36 at 133 miles per hour to head home the nitrous class.